I had a dream that God shared with me. And what was this one different than the others? This one is very vital and crucial to the body of believers. It is an answer to prayers. What God has revealed and shown. You see, in the, in the dream, there, I was gathered with believers and non-believers alike. Everybody was looked like a camp, some gathering. But it was in a building, nice luxurious buildings. And as we look out over the water, I see 40 water spouts forming and connecting to the water out into the ocean. And as people are just hanging out and having fun, I yell out and say, there's 40 tornadoes out there, 40 tornadoes coming this way. And you see the storm and the water coming towards where everybody was gathered. People just kept on cheering. They're like, they, they got excited, ignored it. And they turned up the music even louder and started dancing and cheering, eating and drinking. Everybody was having fun. I, I turned to someone else, let's count them. That's that before, this is when I, I counted it, knew the number. I said, let's count them. I was with one other person that, that see, appeared to be awake. I started counting all of them, 40. 40 is a big number in the Bible. You see, as the time went on, people were about to load onto what appeared to be a building uh, or a ship. They're in line gathering to go across this bridge onto it. That was, they're mocking about what was coming. And when I warned again, I was in line with them. And I was like, I turned around and I said, I am not going. God has sent his son, he's warned us and he died on the cross for our sins. We need to repent from our sins and change our wicked ways. You see, God has sent a flood upon the entire earth to cleanse it from the wickedness. And people are just denying that there's gonna be judgment coming, that this is not judgment, that no harm will come to them. There's 40 tornadoes out there and we need to repent and turn from our ways. I'm not getting on. And everybody started freaking out, screaming. And then as, as everybody freaked out, very few were still going to get on, but the majority left and departed. As we're still st we're standing there, I started talking loud to people preaching because the majority weren't listening. They just were kept congregating and talking amongst each other, and they started getting more distressed. The anxiety started to dissipate from the people, and they started not fear anymore because they started wondering, what was judgment coming? Is it coming? Are these tornadoes gonna even going to reach us? Even in my heart, I started feeling the same. Is it going to come? But then God said, yes, speak. I started speaking to somebody because I knew those around would hear. I said, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. You see, God sent his son into the world to save us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to save us from our wicked ways. But we must be steadfast in the faith and know that he is coming to save the righteous. You see, you can't continue in your sins. In the same way, if somebody was drunk, a drunkard and a sex addict, we were living with their parents and you kept bringing in another woman or somebody else in your home and coming home drunk. Eventually your parents are going to kick you out the same way with God. I said, God loves us, doesn't love us any less, but he has to let us stumble or go our own heart's desire. And if we choose to come back to him, he'll save us and cleanse us. But if we continue in our wicked ways, he cannot. And as people are getting relaxed, they don't think a judgment is going to come. And that's what's going to happen. The 40 represents different sizes. There's different sizes of tornadoes coming. Different shapes. Some thin, some, some big. And those 40 represent Yeshua fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses went to the desert for 40 years. Then he went back for 40 years. You see, Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses went on top, to the top of Mount Sinai for 40 days and fasted for the people, weeping. Jonah proclaimed for 40 days, telling people to repent, saying judgment was coming. You see, many things happen with 40. 40 is a big number. So 40 also when Yeshua came and resurrected from the dead and, and stayed with the disciples. And at the 40 days, the spirit was given, right? See, God is warning. And as I gave an envision the other day as well, that God gave and told when you're speaking when we're on the mountain, many trees, multitudes of trees, green trees, yet there's dead ones amongst them. Somewhere at the very, as you're climbing to the top of the mountain, you get, there's more green trees, but yet there are still dead trees. So he said, so it will be. 
He said, what do you see? And I'm looking even in the valley where it's cold, where it's shadow, dead trees with snow all around it. Hearts will grow cold because of distance from the law. Hearts will not make it to the top of that mountain. Some will make it to the top and they will give up and die. That meaning, they will not get steadfast in the faith. They will not endure until the end. God is saying, be like these trees, silent before him, growing and soaking up the nutrients, patient and enduring. The thing about a tree, the rings, you know when there's a famine in that year because the rings will be thinner every year when you, if you cut down a tree. When there is a lot of water and abundance, the, the rings are thicker. You can even tell when there's earthquakes. You can tell when there's disaster or certain things that happen during that year. It's interesting because a tree tells us a lot, yet they, are you bearing fruit or are you not? You see, a tree continues in silence before God. You should be at peace like a tree. All the creation obeys the voice and hears the word of God, except man. They, at least creation listens to the voice of God, but man does not. What's interesting is, he said, look to the left, I see a tree. This is, uh, we're on top of a mountain. This is in, in, in the Rocky Mountains, guys. And I look to the tree, and there's one, a green tree that is amongst, uh, on, on a solid foundation of the rock, where we, me and a friend were standing. And we're standing there. And I look to the right, and there's this green tree, right, is, is growing on the left, but to the right, there's a, there's a tree that was dead but yet was still in the soil on the rock, but did not endure. The, the, the roots are coming off the rock. In the same way, you must be built on a solid foundation on the rock, but you must be soaking up the nutrients from God's word, the true sound doctrine. Don't try to comfort your life or try to hide or preserve it. And that's what people are doing today. They're going back to their family. They're going back to their own lifestyle. They're going back to their comfort of their, where they're, they're, they're accustomed to, where they feel familiar with their surroundings, where their family is where their in-laws are, where their relatives are. They want to go back to preserve their life rather than lose it. God says, those who lose their life for my sake will gain it. And those who gain their life, lose their life for my sake will find it. So he says, if you love your mothers, your fathers, your sons, your daughters more than me, you are not worthy to be my disciple. He means if you are not willing to do what he says and sacrifice your life, you're going to find it. But moreover, he desires mercy more than sacrifice. And the interesting thing is with those altars, he says, do not use hewn tools. Do not use hewn stone or use tools to build an altar. And that means all the way back in the, the law of God. Why? Because you cannot use your own effort, your own works, your own design, your own ways to build an altar for God to offer your own sacrifices on it and say, this is of God. Otherwise, it will be unpleasing to him. It will not be pleasing aroma to him. It will not be fragrant. Your obedience will be worthless. Everything that you do, because it's not by the faith and the grace of God and the design that he measured out for you to obey and walk in. God said many people will be like those. The path gets narrower, just like with the Israelites. He had them go around in circles because they didn't want to obey God. They tasted the good fruit of the vine from the tree. But they said, we saw the giants. Those giants represent your sins. The things in your life that needs to be removed, uprooted. God told me he's purging his people right now. But if you're not being purged and going through that sanctification process, you will preserve your life and go to another false doctrine. You'll go to another false way. You will hate the very people that delivered you from sin and the death. And you're going right back to death. And you'll say, I won't fall away. If you have to claim, I won't fall away. You're already falling away. You're already dead. You're in danger zone. And it's time to repent and fall on your face because that path will get narrower. And you're going to have to choose. I'm going to walk alone many times because that's the path you're going to have to walk. Because many are will go up to the mountain. That's fun. That's easy. That's like the Polar Express. Just take a, a ride or a ski lift all the way up to the top of the mountain and say, that's it. That's enough for me. I want the easy way to follow God. But they don't want to endure the hiking the mountain. The, just like people on Mount Everest, they don't want to climb as they climb the elevation, get accustomed to the different elevations so that they don't get, don't get oxygen deprived and get headaches and migraines. They rest at certain levels. So will it be with God, but you keep going to the top. Unfortunately, people get to a certain distance. They look back down, they see the fun, they look at easier life, an easier path, rather than dying in their self. And they try to preserve their life by something in this life. God had many blessings for many people, many things for his glory that he could do in your life, but people are going back to preserve their life and not obey. Many people said they're going to come to Colorado. And what had happened? God said, these people are not obeying him. 
that there is a family that did. Guess God is using them for His glory. People are trying to preserve their life. But at a time, people are going to come and they're going to seek the way. They're going to seek the answers. But it appears like judgment isn't coming or in times of smoothness or peace, people are going to go back to their own life. They're going to try to preserve their life in some way, some shape or some form. They're going to try to comfort their emotional emotions and feelings and try to preserve their life with their knowledge. But the knowledge is not going to save you. Emotions and feelings will not save you. If you are cowering down with losing a loved one in your life, if someone's dying in your life, if some hardships are going to happen, you're losing jobs, losing finances, things are happening in your life, and you're like, I gotta preserve my life. You're already not enduring. You're already trying to think of another way of how to have more happiness or pleasure or joy. You're seeking something that's like, you're not gonna find what you're seeking. Judgment is going to come. It's going to come in an hour when you least expect it. it's going to be like birthing pains, like a woman giving birth. God is saying to return to him. Like a woman giving birth, it's going to be birthing pains. It's going to be contraction, all you regular contractions. It won't be the regular two to three minutes. It's going to be three minutes. It might be eight minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe three more minutes, maybe eight, 10 minutes. But these contractions are going to come back quicker and quicker. And what's going to happen? People are going to try to preserve their life in the moments of the peace, when those contractions and the pain is not happening, they're going to sit there and be at ease, get relaxed, rather than doing the work of God and seeking His face, rather than resting with Him like a tree. Besides still waters, whose roots go out and soaks up that nutrients. It does not worry when famine comes. It does not worry when the weather comes. It's at peace. And what they're doing is standing tall because their roots go deep into the ground and wind cannot shake it. But those who are shaken by the wind will be tossing to and from like the waves of the sea and from the wind that carries it to every wave of deception, a wave of false doctrine and theology that's going amongst and run, running rampant in this life. Now is the time to not try to preserve and comfort your life. There's many people around, but God told me, do not worry about what other people do. You can focus on me, walk alone with me. And this is what God is telling you right now. You can pray for people, but you cannot hold their hand to walk up that mountain because otherwise it will be a burden to you and not try to get their own oil. They're not going to the top of the mountain to get their own oil. They're like those in Isaiah 57 that try to preserve their life. The same wor words God shared with Isaiah 57, they're trying to go to the king to get their own oil rather than the king of kings and the Lord of lords of all creation. They're not going to the holy mountain. They're going to another mountain. They're going to another mountain that's, sad, that's full of different doctrines and theologies. I looked at the mountain behind me when I was at, in, in the Rocky Mountains, and there's one with no trees whatsoever, full of snow. And that represents, it's a much taller mountain, that represents your sins. That represents every false doctrine and theology and every false wave of deception that is going on. And I want to read you this. God showed me this. He told me this today. After I had that dream, he said, he says in Micah 3, Thus said Adonai about the prophets who are misleading my people, those who bite with their teeth and cry shalom, a word that he did not put in their mouth. Yet they consecrate war against him. Therefore you will have night without vision and darkness without divination. The sun shall set on the prophets, the day shall become dark upon them. So the seers will be ashamed and the diviners will be abased. Indeed, all them will cover their lips for there will be no answer from God. God is saying, that people are not going to have the vision of God. They'll be given to a false divination, a false lie, a false dream, a false vision. These people will not see the way, the truth, and the life because they departed it for their own comfort of their flesh. God warns of this time coming. The world will be deceived. And if you say, I can't be deceived, you're already deceived. And I'm warning everybody right now. If you know about how much knowledge you know, know how much Torah you know, how much of God you know in the Bible, and how much you memorize, it does not secure you. You're going to have to be at rest. Go at peace with God. You're going to have to get alone like a tree. Stare at a tree and you will learn a lot from it. Maybe you will learn peace. Because many are departing from the faith right now. And you aren't going to make it if you're trying to preserve your life. <laughs> you really want to obey God? Rest. Be silent before Him. Stop speaking. Everybody's looking at the body of believers as a social gathering. It's not a social gathering. This is life. This is life, eternal life. Is your you take it seriously or you just take it as a social gathering as drinking coffee and eating donuts? Now is the time to get serious. Now is not a time to get 
lazy. Rest with God. Be at peace with him. Listen to his voice. Go to the wilderness. Go to the mountains. Sit there and listen to God. Hear what he has to say. Stop with all the noise in the synagogues, in the churches, in the ministries, the organizations, and the news, and everything going on in, in the world. He says, because hearts would fail them with fear of what's coming upon the earth. But what the people are doing the opposite of the fear and denying that fear to try to preserve their life with comfort and fun and enjoyment in their own families that is worldly. They want to go and try to preserve their life. And it's not going to help you endure until the end. You will die and you will perish if you don't repent and get serious. Because the judgment's coming. Peace, followed by another judgment. Peace again, followed by another judgment. Until all 40 come and destroy. Until the locusts come and strip what God has given. <laughs> Pay attention. Be patient. Be humble. The humble and contrite in spirit. Heart, soul, and mind. That's seeking with our heart, soul, and mind. That's not prideful. Pride is sneaky. In your life, be careful. You got to make sure you're in the light and not in the darkness. The cockroaches come out in the night and invade your kitchen. When the light comes on, they scatter, but you got to be in the light. Be careful. There's a lot of false doctors and theologies going on and all kinds of different movements, messianic to Christian, to Torah knowledge, to Hebrew roots, to Jewish roots, all these different things, and Nazarim, all these different movements are a lie. You have to be with God. There's only one way, one truth, and one life. A million ways to hell, but only one way to heaven. You gotta make sure to find that narrow path in that gate. Because that narrow path gets narrower as it goes up the top of the mountain. But when you get up there, it's gonna get harder to breathe. You're gonna, you, the oxygen gets thinner, right? But you're gonna keep enduring. Many are gonna give up the fight and just say, this is enough at the very bottom of the hill. This is enough, I, can, I, I don't want any more. I'm satisfied where I'm at. Some are gonna die, some are gonna live. But nevertheless, God is coming back with Yeshua, is going to restore. He's coming back for his people, but hardships are coming, hard times are coming. You're gonna to have to make a choice. Will you endure and rest with him or not? So if you can't rest with him now, you're gonna to try to go to another place, seeking, never finding. That's why it says in Daniel, people will run to and fro, gaining and seeking knowledge, but they'll never be at rest. Some will fall and stumble. Some will be purified and preserved. But the righteous will shine like the stars forever and bring many to righteousness. Make sure you are that person. Get ready.